I did not grow up hunting. I honestly wasn't even interested in hunting until relatively recently. For the longest time, I was a recreational outdoorsman, but I had this inherent feeling that there was something bigger out there, something to make me feel more human. My obsession with the outdoors started nearly a decade ago as I began exploring wild places and delving into long distance backpacking, kayaking, and wildlife photography. But in the last five years, I became interested in the philosophy and politics of hunting and conservation. Now I love wildlife, and the fact that I love wild things and wild places above all else seems to conflict heavily in the minds of many with the reality that I also love to hunt. To me, these two go hand in hand, but not too long in the distant past, I felt, as many do, that they were in opposition. This is a story about how hunting has impacted the lives of many people, including myself, and why it matters so much in this day and age. To answer some of the pressing questions that I was battling with, I traveled to a ranch a few hours outside of Dallas-Fort Worth to attend the Hunt Fish Podcast Summit, where some of the most profound voices in the hunting, angling, and conservation world gather to discuss the very topics that I'm continually racking my brain with as I'm falling headfirst down this rabbit hole known as hunting. One of the toughest challenges for new hunters is dealing with the thoughts surrounding death. Because frankly, in this modern world, we don't talk about it much, if at all. Let's speak with Renee Thornton, chair of the Women Hunt Program and a new hunter herself to gain a better understanding. You know, not to get too philosophical here, but I think part of the problem, particularly in really well-developed nations such as the United States, Canada, Europe, that we are getting further and further away, societally speaking, from our understanding of the life cycle. And somehow, you know, death has turned into something that is uh, almost foreign. We are, we're on this quest to live as long as we possibly can. Somehow we've, we've morphed into to human beings who expect that now too. You know, I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding. I think they think that that a hunter, you know, en like enjoys killing the animal. And it couldn't be further from the truth. For myself, it is the worst part of the hunt. Everything about the hunt is spectacular from dreaming about it, planning for it, researching, getting out and scouting, uh, getting some friends to come along, preparing your kit, you know, all of it. The whole thing is, it's awesome. Killing that animal is the worst part of the journey. And that's why sometimes when I'm not successful, I really couldn't care less. I've just had the best time. And so I think, you know, trying to help people in our communities who are either neutral about hunting, questioning hunting, perhaps even anti-hunting, the more we can have these conversations about the natural aspect of the life cycle and that death is part of it and that it's not, it's not the end-all be-all of hunting, the better, you know, we might be able to help people understand that. While reconciling with taking the life of an animal can be difficult, it's important to consider the ecological benefits of hunting, such as population control, habitat conservation, and well, food. Hunters contribute millions of dollars per year towards conservation by purchasing hunting licenses, firearms, ammunition, and by being active members of conservation organizations. They also develop, if they're willing, a deep understanding of not only the game they hunt, but also of the environments in which these animals live and the delicate balance these ecosystems require. Let's talk to ecologist and naturalist Andrew Austin to learn more. You know, if it wasn't the case that hunting was beneficial to, to wildlife, I wouldn't hunt. I hunt because is beneficial for conservation. And you know, I grew up hunting, and then I went through a phase um, before I went to you know university to study wildlife ecology. 
I was learning about, you know, we, we are in a time where species are going extinct at a pretty rapid rate in different parts of the world. Now, here in North America, we're not experiencing that because we have the North American model of conservation, which we're talking about now. But around that time when I was learning about the, you know, the kind of the state of the world and, you know, the Amazon and some of these areas losing species rather rapidly, and I was like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gonna hunt anymore. Like, I'm just contributing. So I went through that phase for about two years where I was like, why would I hunt if I love wildlife and it's my hunting is not helping? But then I went and got an ecology degree and I learned about population ecology and how certain species on the landscape now are more abundant than they were prior to European settlement. And to maintain these ecosystems, we need to manage these species because unfortunately, people before us killed a lot of our native predators. And you know, without apex predators, you can have one species that becomes too abundant and it can lead to a, a decrease in biodiversity. And that's what we really want is functioning biodiverse ecosystems. And uh, unfortunately, humans have such a large um, influence on our landscapes now. Like in Texas, in East Texas, we don't have cougars really anymore. But there's some red wolves are extirpated, a jaguar are extirpated. So like in East Texas, where I'm from, a lot of our native predators are gone. So hunters have to fill that niche to control white-tailed deer and other game and you know ungulates and stuff. and. Uh, I'm a, I'm a naturalist first and a conservationist first. I hunt because I care about ecosystems. A few hundred years ago, an estimated 30 to 60 million bison roamed North America and were a staple food source. And a few hundred years after that, they were nearly extinct due to overhunting. Today, we have regulations and bag limits in place to prevent this. But as Americans, hunting for food has become generally replaced by industrialized farming practices, which has us subsisting mainly on beef, chicken, and pork. Many modern hunters commit to hunting for many reasons, but more often than not, I hear that it's a pushback against the overprocessed, chemical-laden meat consumed today. Gray Thornton, president and CEO of the Wild Sheep Foundation, is no different. As society becomes more urbanized and further removed from, you know, how, uh, how the, the life and death cycle is, you know, from a hunting perspective, I know where my wild game, my meat comes from. You know, look at, look at the chemically engineered and, and you know, genetically engineered things that we eat today. Well, you know, I, I take great pride if I'm, you know, hunting a white-tailed deer, you know, the most, the most hunted species in North America. And if I'm hunting a white-tailed deer, well, that deer has lived a free life, a natural life. I'm taking that life, processing it down to food for myself and my family, uh, and consuming that. And so I, I find no irony or, or any moral issue in that because as a meat eater, and I'm a meat eater, I'm choosing to, to take that life. I'm not hiring someone else to do it for me. And then somehow justifying that, well, when I go to the grocery store meat counter and pick up a pound of hamburger, you know, or a couple of steaks or a fryer chicken, uh, well, I've actually, process to the you know that to the point for my consumption i haven't you know i haven't mercenary that out as agriculture deforestation and extractive resources eat up land where wildlife thrive and further segment wild places conservation needs to become a priority at the end of the day the whole focus of hunters and non-hunters alike needs to be the conservation of land and resources that allow wildlife populations to flourish in healthy and ecologically sound ways. Wildlife journalist Chester Moore has been writing on the topic of conservation since he was 19 years old. Let's get his perspective on how hunting and wildlife management can benefit us all. Conservation means the wise use of our resources. And in this case, the wise use of habitat, wildlife, and fisheries, and you know, populations of animals. And the reason that is important is we have the technology to wipe it out now if we don't control harvest. And have you looked around lately? Wildlife habitat is being cut down and destroyed in the world globally by the hundreds of thousands of acres a week. 
And so in some areas you have burgeoning populations that are over carrying capacity, causing conflict with people. Other sides, you got animals that don't have the same reproductive capacity that are being eliminated because of this. Here in North America, the great Teddy Roosevelt saw the Yellowstone ecosystem about to be mined, about to be timber harvested. It was the last place that had any real populations of elk, the last place that had any real populations of bison. He said, no, we're not gonna do this ended up founding the national park system, saved the Yellowstone ecosystem. And that, along with others in that era, brought forth the modern era of hunting where hunters voluntarily said, we're gonna charge a license fee to pay for wardens. We're gonna bring back wildlife numbers. And then you had offshoots out of this, like our friends at the Wild Sheep Foundation, putting and keeping wild sheep on the mountains. Without that one group alone, I'm not sure where we would be with wild sheep in North America. You gotta have a user base that is willing to spend money, energy, creativity in the wild to keep wildlife around. Because you know what? The people who like a lot of these birds, just beautiful birds flying around the trees or interested in certain insects, aren't gonna have an association like the National Wild Turkey Federation with 200,000 plus members willing to support conservation efforts. But you know what? When they do wild turkey habitat enhancement, it benefits the indigo snake. It benefits the gopher tortoise, the red cockatoo woodpecker. So that's why conservation in the North American model that we use here is critically important. I started this journey conflicted with how the ideas of life, death, and conservation all converge with one another in the context of hunting. The biggest conflict of all is wondering how can you kill something and love it all at the same time? And I really wanted to see if others felt the same way. Hunters are often viewed as cold, calloused, and unsympathetic, but I learned that this is definitely not the case. Although we all have differing opinions on hunting, at the end of the day, everyone has a similar interest at heart. Conserving wildlife, wild places, and the wild American spirit for our generation and the generations to come. No one on this planet can leave this planet without having blood on their hands of wildlife. The difference is if you take the model of hunting and fishing and you're able to adjust your life to having that game or fish that you killed on your table, it's a much more sustainable model than the factory model we've had. And also the fact because the Warren Ranch where we're at used this for cattle and for hunting and hunting and fishing, and they derive income from this. This isn't a subdivision. This keeps producing wildlife where everything else with no economic incentive is wiped out you not only would, you know, it may be an ugly thought for someone to think this deer has been killed, but how about generations of deer that can never be born because there's concrete instead of wild ground? The truth of the matter is, is that if we value a resource, we'll have that resource. Once we start devaluing that resource, and you, there's all sorts of examples in the, in the wildlife world where, you know, that, that resource no longer has value to people, it's gone. It's gone. There's no one either to you know, advocate for it. Uh, there's no reason to raise money to ensure there's habitat for it. Um, and there's, you know, in, in the protection standpoint, there's no reason to protect it. If hunters and naturalists got together and, and, and attacked this together, and we could conserve so much public land that consumptive users and non-consumptive users could benefit from and return and get North America back to the wild place that it once was. I really think it's just so important that all groups that have that passion and interest in, in making sure we take care of this planet and everything on it, we just need to come together to do that. Even though I may not agree with an anti-hunter's position and they may not agree with mine as a hunter, at the end of the day we have some really, really important common ground and, and, and we just need, need to really work collaboratively together and just make sure for me, I just want to be able for the rest of my life to be able to go in nature and observe nature and observe the, uh, the beautiful animals that live there. Now 
we have just demonstrated to Paul that he has have two lungs. Yeah. Wow.